It seems like all of the major anti-Islamic polemicists consider my videos dumb. Hi everybody and welcome, this is the Apostate Prophet. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Many of you are probably aware of a certain Muslim apologist named Farid. Farid is something like the last hope of Islamic apologetics. I'm not joking, by the way, or not completely. His videos about me were endorsed by people like Ali Dawa, Sajid Lipim, Muhammad Hijab, Sheikh Uthman, and many others. This is why Farid is important. He's the best that Islam has to offer. Farid has a YouTube channel called Farid Response, a channel which he, according to his own words, created only because of me. The channel is here just for apostate prophets. I am honored. And on this channel, he proudly made over 50 videos responding to me. Farid has claimed that he made videos or refutations about all of my major arguments and has thereby refuted or debunked me or destroyed me or whatever language these people use. The problem is that this is not true. He did not refute or respond to all of my major arguments or all of my videos. Before I go into responding to his refutations, let's look at all the things that Farid did not respond to and did not attempt to refute. By the way, I want to note, Farid engaged in a lot of personal attacks, calling me a rat and a filthy whatever. What I want to do in my response to him here is to ignore all that and simply focus on the arguments and the information. In total, Farid made about 52 videos. He actually made more, but he took down some of them, or at least one or two of them as far as I see. At the time that he made refutation videos against me, these videos of mine were public and he did not respond to them. Apostasy in Islam. What he initially did is to post a video of a brief part of a lecture that Muhammad Hijab gave about apostasy, a speech which says something along the lines of apostasy penalties are in alignment with liberal ideas according to John Locke, so it's okay. Maybe Farid realized how stupid that was, so he took it down later. He did not respond to whether Islam is a religion of peace. Islam is the fastest growing religion in the age of Aisha. What he did instead is to deflect, and we will get to that. Farid loves to deflect. He did not respond to my wife beating video. He did not respond to killing gay people because he agrees that this is part of Islam. He did not respond to my video on how illogical it is to pray at a certain time on Friday. He did not respond to Islam is for Arabs. In that video, a lot of arguments are made to show that Muhammad was initially sent for the Arabs, according to the Quran itself. He didn't respond to Allah sends rain down. Is the hijab a choice? Islam versus dogs. Islam versus music. Islam versus art. 72 juicy virgins. How illogical logical and regressive it is to revert to Islam. He agrees with my video on jihad, which is why he didn't respond to it. What does Allahu Akbar mean? Allah makes another mistake. Honoring the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. My video on the Zamzam water. Can Islam be reformed? He wouldn't respond to that. The greater jihad lie. The Kaaba in the Bible. Islam with Muhammad makes no sense. All the things that Satan does. Muhammad's destruction of idols. Does Islam mean peace? Allah is merciless. He deflected from this one, we will get to that as well. What does kafir mean? The story of the Jewish woman who threw garbage on Muhammad. Why I don't criticize other religions? He cannot respond to this, and this video has a lot of responses to many of the stuff that he said in other videos. The hateful world of Islam. Interfaith marriages. Deceptive dawah strategies. Are people leaving Islam because they are ignorant? Everyone goes to hell in Islam. How Allah got his name wrong. The sacrifice craziness. Why Muslims have beards. The mysterious letters in the Quran. A child challenge for every Muslim. How ironic. The Islamic Holocaust. The cult of Muhammad. There is no joy in Islam. Muhammad's moment of sexual despair. Did Allah send prophets to all nations? The ignorance of Islam and Muslims. And why birds poop on the Kaaba. I carefully selected these videos and left some out because I thought, ah, eh, this doesn't necessarily need a response. But that's half of my videos at the time that he made his refutations about me. When it comes to the things that he responded to, he mostly ignored much of the content of the video. Now, without losing time, let's jump into responding to the first video. And the first video that I want to respond to is actually not on his channel, it is on a different channel, EF Dawa. A video which he made in 2019 called Apostate Prophet Exposed. This is the first time that I heard of Farid. 
This video already starts with some very bad logic. It seems like anyone who's an ex-Muslim today is automatically an expert in Islam. How does that happen? First off, that's a poor question. I never claimed such a thing. I clearly say that I practiced and studied Islam. I am aware that most Muslims are not very much knowledgeable on Islam. So if the average Muslim leaves Islam, that doesn't mean that that person is an expert. But then again, I never claimed that I am an expert. I merely said that I know much more than most Muslims. And I think even Farid himself could admit that that is true because he knows that most Muslims know nothing about Islam. And he then compares this to him quitting meat and then suddenly becoming an expert on eating meat. I gave up on eating beef for a couple of weeks not too long ago. And what does that make me? Does that make me some sort of an expert on carnivorous dietary? I think not. It's absurd. Which is a very terrible analogy. We're talking about a diet which is quite different from a religion with specific teachings that you follow and learn and recite and preach and practice. Please, I mean, do I have to point out how terrible his logic is here? <laughs> The first actual case that he makes is about female genital mutilation, where he responds to my criticism of female genital mutilation and then says, Female genital circumcision is known medically as clitoral hood reduction. This procedure does not rob women from sexual pleasure and it definitely does not kill them. In fact, it is a procedure that is endorsed by the American Society of Plastic Surgeons. They even marketed it as vaginal rejuvenation. Wait a minute, what did you say? And the procedure is available in the United States. I really don't want to be insulting, but... I don't believe Farid is dumb enough to not realize what vaginal rejuvenation means and what procedure here he is referring to. Rejuvenation comes from young again, becoming young again. Vaginal rejuvenation is made by adults, women, who want to have surgical procedures at their vagina done in order to get rid of aging and of folds and whatever it is and to make their vagina younger again for different reasons like aesthetics or pleasure. And by the way, the procedure of clitoral reduction or clitoral hood reduction is seen by the World Health Organization as female genital mutilation. And it is also clearly explained, even on the page that Farid himself shows here on the screen, that this is a risky procedure. There is a risk of bleeding, hematoma, infection, nerve damage, and under-resection or over-resection. If an adult does this with their own will, that is up to them. If you do this to a little child for no reason at all, except that this is a religious recommendation, then you are mutilating a person and putting them, putting them at risk, possibly destroying their life. What the hell is this guy thinking? I mean, we are just starting and look at the horrible logic, the very terrible apologetics here. Moreover, Islamic female circumcision or female genital mutilation is not restricted to clitoral hood reduction. According to different sources and books by scholars, it involves more than just that, including the removing of the clitoris entirely, which removes pleasure and which is also extremely dangerous. And we have numerous people living in our time who have experienced the terrible impacts of female genital mutilation. Are there any evidences that Islam condemns female genital mutilation? Yes, Radvan is quoting a hadith that says so right here in the same video. A woman used to perform circumcision in Medina. The Prophet said to her, Do not cut severely, as that is better for a woman and more desirable for a husband. Don't cut too severely. Great. Does this mean Muhammad condemned this practice? If I say, beat those people, but not too severely, does this mean I condemn violence? If I say, kill those people, but don't, you know, create a bloodbath, does this mean I'm against violence? Then he responds to me saying that slaves in the Islamic society were castrated. The castration of slaves. That practice came into the Ottoman Empire from Islamic rule and Arabs. There is a consensus among Islamic scholars that castrating slaves is not permissible. The existence of castrated slaves in an ancient society does not mean that the religion of that society endorses that vile act. Funny. 
because in my original video, I also never argue that it is part of Islam. In fact, I clearly say. To be fair, this practice was not started by the Muslims, but the Muslim world was the biggest customer of castrated black or white slaves. They were in such high demand that everyone paid more for a castrated slave, which increased the castration of slaves before their import. Therefore, the Islamic world started actively castrating captured slaves as well. So in his second actual argument, here he responds to a straw man. Then we come to honor killing and he deflects by saying Next, honor killing. Honor killings is not a Muslim thing. Honor killings exist in Hindu cultures, Latino cultures in South America where, where they refer to it as crimes of passion. It's not a Muslim thing. It's not an Islam thing. When in reality most honor killings happen in Muslim culture and in communities of Muslim backgrounds. He also acts like this has of course nothing to do with Islam at all. Well, it does have something to do with this protectiveness, jealous protectiveness, aggressiveness, honor culture, and with Muhammad applauding someone who said that he will kill the guy if he finds his wife together with somebody. In the same video, he accuses me of being a hypocrite because I criticize Islam for apostasy laws, but don't criticize Christianity for apostasy laws. Persecution of ex-Muslims in Islam is a video about apostasy. Refer to Deuteronomy 13.9. What Farid apparently doesn't understand is that the apostasy laws within Christianity belong to the Old Testament, as it is called, which means they refer to the Israelites, to the Jewish community, before the New Testament. Wow. Okay. I don't know. I don't care. Whatever. Later in the video, he reacts to sarcastic tweets by me and takes them seriously. He commented on a post about a mosque being built in the wrong direction by saying 37 years of prayer for nothing. For someone that has read the Quran three times, he should know better. In the rest of the video, there is nothing noteworthy to respond to, except that he criticizes me for not pronouncing certain words in different languages, like Arabic correctly. He should probably talk to a Turkish religious Muslim and see how they pronounce things. Dude, not everyone is an Arabic speaker. In the rest of this video, there is nothing that is worth responding to, which will not come up in the other videos that we will talk about. Let's move on to the next video. Take care of yourself, and as always, stay away from Islam.